Now the Three Martini Lunch with Greg Columbus and Jim Garrity. And a welcome, everyone, to the Wednesday edition of the Three Martini Lunch, along with Jim Garrity of National Review. I'm Greg Corumbus of Radio America. Reminder that Jim is also the author of the forthcoming The Weed Agency, due out June 3rd. You get your pre-orders in for your copy of that coming book. And, Jim, not good, bad, and crazy martinis for conservatives today. Kind of a free-flowing discussion on just a really bad one. It's the VA scandal, and the president finally addressed it in more than an answer to a question at a press conference, which is the only public comment he had made until today. Today he met with Veterans Secretary Eric Shinseki. Eric Shinseki still has his job as of the time of this recording, and it seems like the president doesn't intend to change that fact anytime soon. The president went to the White House briefing room and made a number of comments basically saying, well, if this really happened, then it's really bad. Here's how he said it. So... If these allegations prove to be true, it is dishonorable, it is disgraceful, and I will not tolerate it, period. Jim, it's not just Phoenix and the uh, list of hundreds of veterans with delayed care, but what's it up to now? Eight or nine different facilities around the country. We know of at least 40 dead from the Phoenix fiasco. Different sets of books at these facilities, certainly in Phoenix. So the if factor here doesn't seem to be uh, much worth saying at this point. It was a really depressing press conference, and it was, if you were a cynic, you could predict just about every step and every beat of the president's press conference. As you mentioned in the intro, the president made one three-paragraph statement back on April 28th. Each day, we get some new revelation of some new hospital having this jaw-dropping scandal of increasing wait times, veterans dying for care, and then lying about it, basically having cooking the books or having two sets of books, secret wait lists that they're not sharing with their superiors. So naturally, the president began by talking about how angry he was about it. Angry! He was mad, Greg. Not mad enough to say anything about it in the past three weeks. He's talked about the national crisis of leaky pipes. He's talked about the countries of Djibouti and somewhere else. And, and he's done, you know, the Cinco de Mayo Festival. He did the White House Correspondents' Dinner. But he's had many opportunities to talk about this so far. Hasn't said a word other than those three paragraphs. Said nothing in the month of May up until earlier today. And now he tells us that he's really, really mad. Then he goes on to talk about, well, we're going to complete the investigation. You think CNN and all these other groups are making this up? <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's been reported in too many different places. You said eight or nine. The Washington Examiner has done a fantastic job on this. And they were writing about this back in 2013. But they have a fantastic map that basically says, look, there have been all kinds of issues from one place to another. Patient deaths at the VA hospital in Memphis. Patients getting addicted to narcotics at the Hampton, Virginia one. Gainesville, Florida. There's a secret way list of more than 200 patients seeking mental health care. It just goes on and on. And so I'm looking at this map, I think it's like maybe 18 or 19, all having these sorts of issues of secret wait lists and various other problems. Doctors saying they renewed prescriptions for narcotic painkillers for patients they had never seen. You know, I mean, like big systemic problems in the VA hospitals. It may very well be that there's lots of lots of good folks in the VA who are doing their best care for patients. But as a whole, the institution has too many glaring problems that have fatal consequences and is not honest in addressing it and will cover it up rather than take their lumps for this. And now they're finding this a very large problem. And the president, upon hearing this as well, let's wait until the final report comes out next month before we do anything. One of the other things the president likes to do, particularly on this issue, but has on others as well, is talk about how, yes, there are still issues to be dealt with, but this is a problem that goes back well before I took office. Here's how he addressed that. We all know that it often takes too long for veterans to get the care that they need. That's not a new development. It's been a problem for decades, and it's been compounded by more than a decade of war. That's why when I came into office, I said we would systematically work to fix these problems, and we have been working really hard to address them. Jim, they've been working really hard, but working really hard and promising to address things doesn't actually equal addressing them. No. Those of us on the right side of the aisle have said for a really long time that you can't solve a problem by throwing money at it. And in fact, that generally sometimes makes things worse. VA funding has grown nearly 70% over the last five years. This is not an issue of money. This is an issue of staffing, an issue of management, an issue of basically accountability. You know, that when the wait lists get longer, the people in charge of each individual VA hospital and VA office have one or two options. They can be honest about it, saying, hey, our backlogs are getting bigger. We know we've been told to reduce them, to work faster, you know, to cut down that backlog, but we're failing to do it. 
And then they can ask for more resources, but we're spending way more money than we used to, but the results are going in the wrong direction. But instead of doing all that, they covered it all up. They basically said, no, we are making progress, and it's great. One of the more infuriating moments of this press conference came when Obama kept citing the reduction in the caseload, the reduction in the backlog, when in fact, that's precisely what's in dispute here, that it actually has gotten much, much worse. And in fact, there's a considerable argument and some statistics put forth by the Washington Examiner saying that actually no wait times are up, the backlogs are up. The number of people having serious health issues because they've not gotten treatment in time is up. Actually, things are going all in the wrong direction. And what's intriguing is it basically said, look, you know, I know there's allegations of cooking the books, but according to the books, we're doing fine. I think he has one valid point, although it's a valid point he didn't think was so valid back during the Bush administration. And that's that over the past 15 years, there's obviously a lot more people in the system because of the wars we've been in. Back 15 years ago, we hadn't had, other than the Gulf War, an active lengthy war since Vietnam. And so people kind of had a handle on it, even though the system wasn't working that great then. I just want to go back and play the clip that you referred to about the president talking about spending increases during his term in office when it comes to veterans issues. We have made progress over the last five years. We've made historic investments in our veterans. We've boosted VA funding to record levels, and we created consistency through advanced appropriations so that veterans organizations knew their money would be there regardless of political wrangling in Washington. And Jim, I think there's bipartisan agreement that if there's anything that we should be spending taxpayer dollars on, it's care for our veterans. To what extent do you think that quote right there kind of gives us a window into the liberal mindset that if we're spending money on it, then the problem must be going away? Reagan used to say something, the problem with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant, the problem is that they know so much that isn't so. (laughs) Um, I mean, when Shinseki came in, he set a very high standard. He said, look, every disability claim will be processed within 125 days with 98% accuracy. And boy, if that were the case, that'd be fantastic. But it's not. It used to be four months when he was sworn in back in early 2009. By 2012, they were averaging nine months. 70% of the 900,000 claims for initial benefits were considered backlog, meaning older than 125 days. I mean, think about that. That's four months before anybody even starts moving on your application for benefits. Just a untenable situation here. And these are these have all been covered at the time. Very often they get covered in the local press or, or you know, not necessarily the big-time papers. But as a result of that, the local editorial boards have been scathing on this. And it only comes to the attention of the president once CNN starts reporting it, once you start seeing it on the front page of the New York Times. Shinseki has his awful performance in Capitol Hill saying, nobody's madder than me, but we're working on it. And unsurprisingly, we have no reason to believe that this review is going to make any bigger change than the one that was implemented at the IRS, than the one that was implemented at the State Department after Benghazi, than the one at the NSA after the NSA revelations came out, or at the HHS after healthcare.gov totally failed. I mean, this is a pattern of failure in government under President Obama, and it keeps happening over and over again, and he never learns from it. He never reevaluates the way he sees the world. Everything basically comes down to lack of money or those mean Republicans. And you can kind of tell in this thing, he was really irked that there was no partisan angle for him to play on this. You know, he kept warning everyone else not to play politics with this. Well, I think what he defines as playing politics is criticizing him. (laughs) And then finally, the last part that was just so galling is he kept emphasizing how important this issue is to him and how this is one of the driving causes of his presidency. Well, when this happens on your watch, how can you still say veterans care is one of the driving causes of your presidency? That's a rhetorical question, Greg. I don't expect you to answer that. (laughs) And then it comes down to, you know, if this has been a veteran here, a veteran there, maybe they got confused on how the system worked, but we've got hundreds, probably thousands of veterans, certainly with the backlogs and certainly hundreds when it comes to the corruption and the uh, secret lists and and the cooked books here. Basically, by saying, if in fact this is true, kind of diminishes your trust in their story of what's happened to them. During the press conference, there's a lot of people having, you know, variations of, hey, veterans, if you like your health care, you can keep your health care. Once we've seen this much large scale mendacity from this administration, it really makes governing very hard because no one has any reason to believe anything they say when they say they're going to take responsibility, they're going to fix this, they're going to address this. At this point, based on past history, we have no reason to think anything's going to be dramatically different at the uh, VA a year from now than it is right now. And to be honest, we've heard occasional rumors that Shinseki offered to resign. We don't have any confirmation of that, but there's no indication that Shinseki is even going to go. And if you can have this happen on your watch and not lose your job, what does it take 
uh, is one of the reasons we felt the need to, to scrap our format for today, Greg, that it just, it's, we can laugh at a lot of the problems of Washington, but this one is just really galling, and there's very little indication this is going to turn out any differently than on the other previous messes we've seen under this administration. Yeah, and as we discussed yesterday, the inherent structure of the VA creates so many problems of its own, just adding on the problems we've been talking about here makes it even tougher to turn around. Hopefully we'll have happy news for you tomorrow, at least in one of the martinis, Jim. Talk to you then. All right. See you tomorrow, Greg. Jim Garrity of National Review. I'm Greg Corumbus of Radio America. Thanks for being with us today. Please join us again on Thursday for the next Three Martini Lunch.